I can't believe we're already at video 9 in my Ireland vlog series. I am getting closer and closer to Dublin as I finish Ireland's National Famine Way. Of course, I'm sure all of you know by now that I walked Ireland's National Famine Way to raise money and awareness in the fight against domestic violence, specifically for Casa of Pinellas County, Florida. Please consider donating just a little bit of money, 10, 15, maybe $20, even $5 will help. CasaPinellas.org slash walkwithrick slash C-A-S-A-P-I-N-E-L-L-A-S dot org slash walkwithrick slash. Just a quick side note before we get started. I know that my backdrop for these videos has been a little bit boring. You can see a little bit of Lily's cat condo over there, and I just have this generic window screen behind me. I am moving. Actually, by the time you watch this video, I have moved, but while I was doing all the hard work of moving, I wanted to have all these videos edited and scheduled before I did that. I'm going to try to set up a really cool podcast, video, and live stream studio in my new house, so you can look forward to that. Right now, from Enfield, Ireland, let's start the video. So I'm just walking to the next stop on the trail. I have my hotel booked for tonight. I have it booked for tomorrow night in Dublin. So when I finish the trail, I will have a place to stay, which is a little concerning because Dublin is a very, very popular city and finishing on a Friday and having to stay a Friday night, it's a big deal. I also have my hotel for Dublin the day before I leave so that we didn't run into a situation where there was no place to stay in Dublin the day before my plane leaves. So that has been booked I am kind of excited because it appears the day I leave is going to be my birthday. And I can hopefully spend the night before my birthday and then the first few hours of my birthday 
in Dublin doing some final things before heading back home and it has been an interesting interesting ride um, I know I went into this a little earlier on the trail but I thought I would talk about some personal stuff that is making this kind of more significant and eye-opening for me. In September of 2019, a friend that I thought was literally, you know, I would say a best friend. I had two best men at my wedding and he was one of them. He was kind of my longest friend of all the people who were at the wedding and um, I thought I would have him as a friend forever and he did some pretty horrendous stuff to me in September of 2019 and having to deal with that losing a friend that you thought was going to be there forever that was tough but you know I still had my friend Matt who was the other best man at my wedding and I was getting active in the Disney community which was really helping as well and I was meeting new people like Jillian and things like that. And then the pandemic hit. And it was just weeks into the pandemic. I got one of those free month trials of one of the learning programs that you can get online and since I was home during the pandemic, I thought I would take some of these classes and enjoy learning a little more. And one of them was on Irish culture. And I was already planning on doing El Camino de Santiago Compostela in Spain, well, from France to Spain when I turned 50. And I was getting all into this Irish history and, you know, my background being Irish, and I wondered, well, does Ireland have anything like El Camino? And that was how I discovered the Ireland Way, which of course was my initial goal here. And I immediately started working towards that when I got back to work, I started putting money, every paycheck, a certain amount for every day worked in a bank account, I called it a jar, to save money to do the Ireland way in June of 2022. And I would collect cans and I'd sell the cans you know, at the recycling place and get that money for the cans and put it in the account for the Ireland way and just all of these different things, money for the holidays from my aunt or whatever. I would put the money away and I was just focused on getting to Ireland and doing the Ireland way. And I, I was hitting the gym like four or five times a week, doing the elliptical, hoping to get ready for the mountains, not realizing that the mountains 
would end up being my downfall, but I was trying, right? <laughs> um, hitting the elliptical, lifting shoulders to try to get ready to carry this pack for as long as I would have to carry it. And just lifting legs because I knew I would need my legs to be strong. And while I was doing all this, I started a podcast. And much like this pilgrimage, the podcast had a lot of stops and starts. Um, initially, I was going to do it with two other people who got really, really busy. And that was unfortunate, and our timing wasn't really working out there. And we had done about, I want to say 20 episodes. We had done a lot. And then somebody claimed that our name was an infringement of their copyright. It was very much a BS claim, but we were running a podcast that didn't make any money and wasn't planning on making any money. And they had lawyers and the lawyer was kind of a jerk for somebody who, you know, I was just telling him that, um, you know, I just want to make everybody happy. This is just a dumb thing we're doing for fun. I don't want to make anybody upset, so let's just work through this. And he wouldn't tell me what they wanted. It was a whole thing. But anyway, so I had that fit and start all the while. I just kept getting ready for Ireland. I was focused on Ireland, working every shift I could pick up for extra hours, everything I could do just to put a little bit more money away for Ireland. I was literally working seven jobs at some points and just putting a little away for Ireland giving the rest to Courtney so she could figure out the bills and everything. Like I was still pulling my weight in the household and everything. But then I just decided, well, this podcast has been pretty hard to get going, but maybe I know enough people from Diz Twitter that I could just reach out to a couple of them and have them be on one or two episodes a month. And maybe I wouldn't need two regular co-hosts and we could just do something a little different. And I could have people with different experiences than mine. I'm somebody who goes to the theme parks like every week when I'm in Florida. And I wanted to find some people who had different experiences. So I reached out to Sarah Says, who lives in Seattle. And she goes to Disneyland more than Walt Disney World. But she does go to Walt Disney World on occasion. And she has a kid, which is a different situation than my own. And I thought she would bring really interesting perspective to the podcast. And then I reached out to Marissa from Chicago and she was in a different spot where, morning. morning where she was an annual pass holder as well, but she lived in Chicago, so she wouldn't get to the parks quite as much. And whenever she was there, she had to make use of the entire day. And it just seemed like we had these differing 
experiences in the parks and I reached out to them and they started doing more and more episodes and Jillian who had been friends with me before the lockdown and everything she started hanging out with me more and more as we kept going back to the parks and before I knew it I was meeting up with Christina who has since moved to Alaska I had met up with Scott a bunch of times at the parks I've just all of a sudden Ken I can't forget about Ken some of my favorite times at the parks were with Ken Christmas Eve 2019 when we had no idea what was about to hit us and we were just running around Galaxy's Edge and having just the best time this was just a few months after the opening of Galaxy's Edge and while I was planning for this I more than filled the gap that was left by that person I thought was my friend and that is just incredible to me after all of that that I got here and I started I started hiking first I started hiking the Ireland way and I thought I can't wait to tell Sarah about this and I was in Dublin and I saw the Oscar Wilde statue and I was thinking oh Marissa she loves to read and she's you know a big writer and this would be really cool for her and you know I planned for this and I'm so happy that I've done it but one of the things that I've learned is that I do love the life I have built for myself and I feel like I have real friends I can trust and are not going to do horrible horrible things so it just really um, caught me by surprise I didn't realize how much I had loved the life I had back in Florida because I've been honest about this I'm not a huge fan of Florida but that doesn't mean that I didn't build a pretty great life with friends in Detroit and Alaska and Seattle and Chicago and Southern Florida and still some of my friends in Pennsylvania still some friends I don't talk to Doug a whole lot anymore but Doug from Arizona he was a real ride-or-die friend when I needed one so it's it's interesting what you find out when you separate yourself from everything and you just give yourself nothing but time to just think. On a side note, the official trail is on the other side and there is like no trail there. So I've done this side of it and I am hoping that that's not going to mess me up too much. 
and I don't know if all this walking is starting to wear out my shoelaces, but my right shoe has come untied for the second time today. And that was not a problem I was having for most of this. Okay, this is beautiful anyway. I'm glad I'm going this way as long as it doesn't take me too far away from the canal and where I'm supposed to be heading. staying in the tent last night. Um, everything's sore. <laughs> um, I, I was doing okay, but it's starting to get me again here. Um, it's not too long after I last spoke with you, and um, I'm just taking a break. Now, I did say I could really use a bench right now to have a drink to sort of readjust the weight of my pack and where my pants were resting on my hips and um, and to tie my shoe, of course. And boy, if I didn't say that, then about 45 seconds later, a bench arrived, which is rare on this trail. So um, I did get lucky. I am I'm getting ready to be done here though. Um, I'm getting ready to be done. <laughs> so I think sometimes it's easier to just keep putting one foot in front of the other when you know that the end game is still like over a hundred miles away from you and you know you're not hitting it for a few days and there's no need even thinking about when you're getting there. It's just about getting to the next stop. And now that, you know, the goal is to have this finished tomorrow, you start to, you start to think you're done. You start to think that you have completed it, but you haven't. This is the toughest part. This is when you're the most tired. This is when your feet are completely sore. This is when your shoes are almost worn. Like, my shoes are pretty beaten up right now. I'm 
at about half their recommended life, I think, and that recommended life probably doesn't consider how much they've been used all of a sudden. And I am struggling. I, I, like, I'm going to make it, but it's just hard to keep that same focus on putting one foot in front of the other when you know you're so close to the finish line. And that seems counterintuitive, but you start to rest. You start to think you're on the downhill slope. And when you do that, you're reminded that every step is the same weight on your back. Every step is the same force on your knees. And what I used to be really, really good at doing when I was a runner, and even when I started doing long pilgrimages, is I could suck up that pain and I could just say, you know, just keep going, just keep sucking up that pain. But it's been harder for me to do that lately. Um, I don't know if it's because I am more afraid of injury because I did have a pretty bad injury when I was running. I'm still dealing with it. Some of my heel issues here on the trail are still related to when I was training for my first marathon and I developed uh, plantar's fasciitis, if that's how you pronounce it correctly. And I had the decision, do I rest it and push back my first marathon or do I just continue to train for the marathon and make the injury worse? And I made the injury worse. So, um, you know, I'm paying for that now. And, and, and it's understandable and it's okay. Um, what I really want is to have that same energy to push through when it hurts that I had when I ran my first marathon and I had plantar's fasciitis while I was doing it. And it wasn't fast and it wasn't pretty, but I ran it and I just want to muscle through. Once I get to the, ho excuse me, hiccup. <laughs> Once I get to the hotel, hopefully later this afternoon, not even tonight, but hopefully this afternoon, sometime around four o'clock. I'm just gonna set a goal that's very achievable because I might stop for lunch in a town that's coming up before then. Um, but let's say I stop, I, I'm, I'm in the hotel at four. Then I have all night to just sit in that bed, watch YouTube videos, and rest up for one last power through. And once I start getting into Dublin, that's going to get so exciting that I think it's not going to be hard for me to stay motivated. Today being the last day along this canal, well, I'll still be along the canal, but just seeing the same sights and some of the same things, it's getting hard. It's getting hard. So... I had no idea what my journey was going to look like when I got to Ireland. I had visions of the Ireland Way and walking through these little towns all throughout the west and the middle part of Ireland and seeing all these different sites. And instead I'm seeing very, very similar sites on this trail. and. I'm just trying to make it through I, and I'm just trying to not everything can be exactly as you envision for somebody like me that's hard that's a hard concept to it's hard to live with that concept so I'm struggling this is uh this is the time where I have to kick that next gear so Hopefully I can do it.
We're going to pick things up right there next Monday, which happens to be October the 3rd. We will officially be in Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Of course, I walked Ireland's National Famine Way to raise money and awareness in the fight against domestic violence, specifically for Casa of Pinellas County, Florida. Please donate today, casapinellas.org slash walkwithrick slash we are going to end the fundraiser on Halloween night, October 31st. So we're getting close to that end point. If you haven't donated yet, C-A-S-A-P-I-N-E-L-L-A-S dot org slash walkwithrick slash. Of course, if you have already donated, please like, subscribe, and share this video with others so we can keep spreading the word and keep getting more donations. I'll talk to you next week.